Java faces significant environmental challenges, including deforestation, plastic pollution, and poor waste management, which threaten natural resources and biodiversity. Initiatives like the Joy FM Safari Eco Valley Tour is a vital step towards addressing these issues by educating the next generation on the importance of protecting the environment. This third Eco Tour brought together 100 extra young minds, adding to the 380 students who participated in the previous editions. It's very good question. So the omnivorous birds feeds on some of the fingerlings as well. The young participants gained hands-on experience in environmental sanitation and waste management, guided by the environment officer Joy Hansen, who broke down the difference between organic and inorganic waste. Let's move here real quick. It's the organic and inorganic waste. I saw it earlier. I was with my colleague and she just dumped something in one of the bins. <laughs> then I asked her, which of them is the organic and the inorganic? And I mean, we're both trying to battle it out. Okay. But then for um, myself and our audiences right now, just take us plus the students, because at the end of the day, it's expected that these young students would be eco champions, learn how to conserve the environment, knows waste, um, sustainable means, and etc. and all that. So, Joy, kindly take us through that. I mean, a demonstrative bit. I know some of them have um, plastics and other stuff that they want to dispose of. So so that we know the difference between these. Okay, so, so the microphone. Okay, so when it comes to organic, organic, organics are waste that can be biodegradable, so they can biodegrade by themselves. And then inorganics are the plastics. When you when they are in the soil for more than thirty years, they are still going to be the same. Uh, so they don't biodegrade by themselves, but with organic they do. The Safari Valley team also walked the talk showcasing their eco-friendly practices like burning fuel-powered cars to cut emissions and keep their space a green sanctuary. With the car park, all the cars that emit fuel, that's the fuel combustion cars, are all kept at the car park. The car park can take up to 250 cars around that side. We only allow the electric cars into the resort to reduce the emissions we make inside. That's for sustainable purposes and also conservation. Most of our species here are introduced. If we allow most of these fuel combusting cars into the resorts, pollution will be on a higher rate. And also to for the health of our guests. The health of our guests is very paramount to us. We ensure that when they come here, they leave the pollution in the cities and then enjoy a fresh and serene environment in the results. Students couldn't hide the excitement sharing what they learned and how they would take the lessons home. You guys have had fun, right? Yes. I can, I, are you sure you had fun? Yes. yes. What was your favorite part? My favorite part is the Aryan camp. The wildebeest. A wildebeest? Yeah. Why, why the wildebeest? Because I like it. You like it? Yes. So you're coming back here to see the wildebeest? Yeah. And it wasn't just the students who were thrilled. One of the event sponsors, Roberta Akwe from Albert Microfinance said the initiative is a powerful investment in the next generation of eco-leaders. So it's been very exciting, very educative for the kids and we being a part of this program, as in we sponsoring the program, it perfectly aligns with our corporate social responsibility and um, the environment is very dear to the institution as a whole as the curtain closes on this week's edition one thing is certain these young echo enthusiasts are ready to turn their lessons into action ensuring a sustainable future for all jacqueline and sumaya boys report read to you